Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. It's a peaceful Saturday morning. Welcome to another exciting edition of ATP Live. Today, we're going to be talking about something very, very interesting. I hope you'll enjoy yourself. Don't forget to share. Please invite your friends to watch, ask your questions, and please make them very short and brief so that you can we can take all your questions. All right. Um, Dr. Baby is here with me today, and we'll be talking about developmental milestones and delay. Wow. So many people have questions. Why is my child not doing this? Is he supposed to be walking? Why is he not crawling? His neck is still shaking. Don't worry, Dr. Bimi will take all your questions and you'll be more at peace. All right. So Dr. Bimi Solabuede, she's a consultant pediatrician and she's also the founder of ATP. Dr. Bimi Sola, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Hope. Good, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning as we talk about uh, development. This is a, obviously a topic uh, very close to my heart and uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. So we just encourage you to please share the video on your timeline, share it to all your friends, let them join us and you can also drop your questions and we'll be taking them during the program. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. You have heard her. Drop your questions. Please share and invite your friends to watch. All right. Developmental delays, developmental milestones. Dr. Bimi, what exactly are milestones? Okay, so uh, when we talk about development, uh, I would just like to do an introduction. So uh, okay. there are two major things that make children different from adults. Okay, I always like to post that okay. to ask questions to when I have live audience and I ask people to get the answers. But uh since I, I can't ask people now because of time so but there are two major things that make children different from adults number one children's grow and number two children's develop in other words you have a child who was born very tiny three kilograms and before you know it in one year that child is already one year and, and it's already uh, 10 kilos uh, that is gross at the same time that child was born completely helpless unable to feed for himself unable to do in fact, some mothers wonder whether they can see or do any other thing else. But in another one year, that child is standing, is walking, is able to start talking, start saying mama and dada and things like that. So those are the two major things that make uh, children different from adults. So children grow and then children uh, develop. So, and those are the two major things that worry mothers. So we talk about nutrition and growth. You know, those ones go together when children are not eating or they are not adding ways. Mother wants to know what to do about it. So which is one of the topics we've addressed before. So today we are going to address the second part of it, which is how does um, what happens when when you are expecting children to be developing and maybe you are not seeing them uh, developing the way it should be. So. That, that is another second thing that a uh, second part of the unique nature of children that tends to give parents uh, all sorts of uh, concerns. So when we talk about development, we are talking about the changes that happen in children, the fact that they're able to transform from uh, being completely helpless human beings to getting to the point where they are able to do things for themselves. You know, they get to the stage where they can do virtually every other thing like an adult they can talk they can work they are completely independent and uh, able to function in the society so basically that is what uh, development is and so along the way there are different uh, uh things that children can do so there are ways by which we measure to know that these children are growing uh they are developing appropriately so those are the things we call my so they are like uh, uh, they are like uh, ways of measuring, like the currency of knowing whether this development is going is going fine or not. So there's a timeline where expect children to do certain things. So if they're able to do that thing at that time, then we are happy. If they are not able to do it at the time we expect them to do it, then we will say that oh, this child development is not being the way it should be. So those milestones are those landmarks signposts that help us to know whether developments are going appropriately or whether they are not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Benny, for that you know, introduction. Um, quick one. Are all children expected to develop at the same rate at the same time? Can we say at three months, okay, all babies should be able to hold their necks still 
at six months, all baby shoes, all babies should be able to sit, you know, without support at all okay. times, at all ages. Okay, uh, thank you so much for that question. Uh, once again, I will encourage our viewers, please share this video, share it on your timeline, share it everywhere so that others can join us. And then we will start to take your questions. Thank you so much for those of you joining us already. Okay, so uh, there are some principles that underline, uh, that underline development. Number one, um, development, we call it cephalopod. I don't want to use medical jargon, but, but in other words, the development always follows certain uh, 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 timelines. So children, they can they must suffer all their neck before they will be able to sit. Then they must be able to sit first before they will be able to crawl. And they must be able to crawl first before they will be able to walk. So, and all children will go through that same uh, timelines. But the, the exact timing for each child may be different. In other words, so some children will hold their neck by three months. Some children may still not hold their neck until about four months. So it may vary from child to child, but the sequence will be this will be similar. You understand? And uh, yeah, exactly. But but the time exact timing, we have the average range. Everything is a range. So some children may work at nine months, some children may work at one year, and some children may not work until 18 months, but they see what is called the normal average timelines. Whereas it may take so, but it is when you now move very far away from the average, that's when we as pediatrician will start you know, getting worried and we talk about okay, this may be an abnormal development. You understand the point? So uh, so those are some of the principles, and development is not only in what there are different domains of development so most time mothers are only worried about the physical domain uh walking and all those things but, but there's also yes. the language so we have about five different uh uh domains of development i'm, I'm going to show us the uh the picture sometimes down the line uh that shows us all the uh the various domains so you have the physical domain uh you have the um uh, you, you have the gross motor, what we call gross motor development, then you have what we call the uh, the language, the speech and language, then we also have what we call the, uh, uh, we have the social emotional or self-help skills, things the children can do for themselves, and then we also have uh, uh, we saw we, uh, we, we, we also have the, uh, I've talked about language, I've talked about physical uh, growth, uh, gross motor, we have fine motor, and we have uh, personal social. So those are the difference. And then we also have what we call cognitive, that is ability, intelligence, and stuff like that. So those are the different domains of uh, development in children. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. You know, most times Nigerian parents and mothers are always worried about the physical development, so to speak. It's not working yet. All the other children are working. You can't sit yet, you know. We tend to come you know, compare children and babies with the physical things we see. We're not, you know, thinking about the cognition, the gross motor and all of that. Okay. So, um, Dr. Bimi, quick one. Can you, you know, explain when we should be worried when there's a delay? At what point can you say, oh, okay, a mother should be worried as a result of a developmental delay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, if you, for those of our viewers, they can see it on my screen now. Um, they can see the various five aspects of uh, development that we we're talking about. There's gross motor, and then there's vision and fine motor, and there's EMA speech and language, and then there's the social, emotional, and behavior, and then there is also cognition. So those are the five uh, area of uh, development uh, uh, of development in children. Uh, so, um, so if when there's uh, issues with any of these domains. Now, there are what we call the milestones. So it is important that mothers know what is the normal milestones. If you don't know the normal milestones, then you will not know whether it is delayed or not. And like I said earlier, oh, no. there's also an average timeline. So sometimes mothers worry a lot, they panic too heavily. Uh, you know, maybe they spend one year working at nine months or one year because most time mothers do this by comparing their child to another child that was born around it's the same the period. Children. So when you notice yes, that oh, this my own child is is not yet uh, doing what this other child is doing, they can panic. But that may still be within the normal 
like timeline the other side that i talk about so but for everything we have what we what we pediatricians call the cutoff points it is at this cutoff point that we the pediatricians will worry so for example now most children will work as one year that's the average but as a pediatrician i'm not going to worry until a child is only working at 18 months so if your child is not yet now working at 18 months that is the time i expect you to so you know that's the time we pediatrician will start to worry that why why is this child not yet working at 18 months you understand the point so ideally uh most of our children's checkbook uh uh what they call it like the, the book where you normally record your immunizations and stuff like that there's also a part of it that should be for development where you're supposed to be recording the child's development and they would have in those okay. books you will have an idea that okay this is what this child development should be so they can now okay. Uh, be a, a guide for you because the, the, the milestones are so many and we have it from you know, zero to five years so it's difficult for me to tell mothers all of them at once you will, you will not even remember them but we are expecting that you as a mom should be going to the hospital you should be going for immunization for the well baby checks and it is during those well baby checks that you'll be able to uh, your doctor should be able to be should be checking what we call they should be doing what we call developmental surveillance developmental surveillance is that every time you see a doctor the doctor should ask about your child's development and if they think that child development is still within the average then they will be okay. happy with you at, at least you should be seeing your doctors all the time during immunization period okay. and, and at least once every year after the maybe uh, after the uh uh the first one year there may be every six months you know things like that in other words so you should have opportunity and doctors have been trained as well that every time you go to the hospital even though you have come for cover and cancer or something else we will see ask whether there's any concerns about development that's what we call surveillance and sometimes we are supposed to also do screening with with doctors or actually pediatricians we're supposed to screen your child we have some specific timeline when we actually do screening so we do screening at nine months mm -hmm. for i'm talking about screening for development now we should do developmental screening we use standard mm -hmm. tools and some of these tools are available online maybe you are in a place where maybe you don't have doctors that can do screening you can go online for developmental screening tools there are some of them that are mm -hmm. something mothers can just you all they will just ask you some questions is your child able to do this? Is your child able to do that? And based on the scores, they will know whether your child's development is within normal or whether your child's development is not um, normal. You understand? So th that is another way. And of course, if you are a mother, you are ever worried at any point in time because you are comparing your child to other children and you say, oh, this my child is development is not what it should be, then you can always go to the pediatrician and the pediatrician will now screen, even though it may be off the specific timelines we normally do screening at nine months 18 months two years two and a half years there may be three and um, four five like that so but we can also screen at other times anytime you have concern we can also screen the child so those are the ways by which we can you know we can check and if the, the, we now notice that the child screening is uh, we call it pass or fail in other words the child failed the screen in other words the child is showing signs that there are problems with development then you definitely now need to do a proper evaluation usually done by the developmental pediatrician so the developmental pediatrician okay. will now screen the child will now do a proper okay. assessment of development you know that's things like somebody like hi that's my own kind of job and they'll be able to tell you oh there's a problem and this is what we're going to do about it but the part i want mothers to know is the fact that they need to be uh, alert to what are the uh, to their child's development you you may not know all the technical development but you can also compare to other children who are born around the same age and if you have concern please don't as he says i know sometimes you could say you you come to us you always say you are worrying you are worrying i'm more happy for you to worry and for me to tell you that there's no reason for you to worry than for you to now to wait so much time Stay before back. you come yeah so oh, we're okay. yeah Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bemi. Thank you for that very, you know, insightful information. Okay, this is a message from Bukola Adeusi. God bless you for the self selfless service. Thank you, Bukola. Let's keep our questions coming. Dr. Bemi is still here and we're talking about developmental milestones and delay. Please don't forget to share the videos so that your friends can have the opportunity to watch and ask their questions. All right, this is from Rosemary. Rosemary is asking, my daughter has... Larry no Macalisia. 
Nice. Did you see yeah. why she's finding it? Yeah, okay, sorry, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, did you see why she's finding it difficult to sit? Okay, uh, that's yeah, that's thank you, Rosemary, for that very beautiful question. Number one, um, okay. laryngomalacia is a minor uh, uh, disorder. For those who are wondering what is laryngomalacia, it's just a, a problem with the, okay. with the hair, with the larynx. You know, it is in children sometimes when they are born, that larynx is a little bit soft. So when those children are breathing in, it's, it's making a lot of noise because it's not yet very strong. It's not yet like bone, like strong cartilage like our own it's very soft so when children the hair is coming in it will be collapsing and so those children will have a lot of noise so it's a minor thing and most children with, with time as they grow older it will resolve so laryngo malaysia should not make your child not be able to see you didn't tell me how old your child is so i don't know whether your child should be sitting or now but usually we expect sitting between six to eight months most children should be sitting by six to eight months so, and I will not worry unless your child is not sitting by nine months. You see, the way pediatricians, the way we worry is, if your child is not yet doing a milestone that she should be doing, as at the time another milestone should be uh, uh, should be starting, then that is the time for us. Well, in other words, most children will start crawling by nine months, okay? So if at the time your child should be crawling, the one before crawling, which is sitting, the child is not yet doing the sitting as the time the child should be crawling, then that is enough uh, timeline for me to know that there's a problem. So I don't know how old your child is, Rosemary. Maybe you may want to tell us, but uh, if your child is not sitting at uh, less than nine months, that is developmental delay. And there are many reasons for why children may have developmental delay, in which we have not even gone into. Uh, uh, th there are many reasons, but sometimes children have problem with the brain. Um, you know, when we talk about development, the development actually has to do with the develop a uh, maturation of the brain in other words what leads to development is the fact that the brain of the children are growing and maturing they are increasing in number the, the cells and they're also increasing in terms of the connections in the brain so that is how children develop so anything that affects the brain uh either uh whether there was a there's a problem at birth Maybe some children didn't cry as bad, for example, they have what we call asphyxia, and it has caused a damage or injury to the brain, or that child has an abnormal brain uh, growth, or something was wrong in the brain. Anything that goes wrong in the brain can affect children's mm -hmm. development, or anything that does not make the brain to grow properly, because brain needs something. There are some essential nutrients for the brain to grow. Glucose, mm -hmm. and the brain also needs things like DHA, mm -hmm. fats, fats, and things like that. So if, for example, the child is not getting the nutrition that is allowed the brain to grow, then that, that brain will not grow properly and that child's development will be affected. Also, children who are sick for different reasons, you know, there are many reasons why children could be sick, they, uh, and it kind of affects them, maybe it, 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 the brain and all that, it can also slow down. But no, there are many reasons why children's development could be slow. So, but the, the point, the bottom line for mothers is that if you think your child's development is slow, then you should see your pediatrician as soon as possible. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bemi. Please, when you're asking your question, you can just put the age of the child so that Dr. Bemi can know how well yeah. to address your question. Let's keep the questions coming. And don't forget to share the video so that your friends can have the opportunity to watch and learn as well. All right. Do we have another question there? No. Okay. Maybe in the about? absence of questions. Our comments have been saying thank you. Nice one. Thank you. We see your comments. Let's keep them coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. But we will right. appreciate you. Okay. Can you tell us? Okay. Go on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you tell us why you know we can have besides problems with the brain? Are there any other things that you know, other things that could cause developmental delays that could cause a child not to attain a particular milestone at a particular time? Yeah, like uh, some children could just be slow. Uh, uh, like I said, development takes place over a timeline and it varies from one child to another child. Uh, and, 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 but, but as long as the child is still uh, uh, achieving those milestones within the normal, uh, uh, within the average limit, we are happy with the child. But there are many reasons why other children can have uh abnormal development so and yes. when we talk about abnormal development again there are different kind of abnormal development let me just quickly say that before i go on sometimes children have 
we lay in only one aspect of the development. In other yeah, words, yeah. Uh, a child may not work on time, but it's talking fine. Is um, is uh, other area of development is fine. You know, so we call that yes, isolate, isolated developmental delay is just in one area of development. But some children may have delay in all the domains. All the um, also you have, yes. yeah, also you have two or more domains that are uh, delayed, and that is globe, we call it global developmental delay. Okay, so that's one thing. So we call it global developmental delay. There's sometimes children who have what we call uh developmental deviation in other words even within one particular domain the, the children are able to do it but they, are, they did it the wrong way you know i don't want to go into medical general but just to say that there are, there are different ways by which development could be there it could just be an isolated thing we know that maybe the child is just okay. slow talking but the child work on time the child is doing every other thing but just slow with talking you know that is isolated speech delay okay. or it could tell the growth okay. delay or the child may work on time the child may talk on time but the child cannot use the hand properly cannot write properly that is fine motor okay. delay yeah or the child could have uh who could do all those symbols maybe the child could not get potty trained on say after four years so that one is in personalization or yeah. self skills but when you have the so most times Okay. Uh, there are professionals that deal with all those developmental delays. So if it's a cross motor problem, for example, most likely the child will just need maybe physiotherapy yeah. and all that. Sometimes if it is, uh, okay. uh, what's it called now? If it is just a uh, uh, cognitive fine delay. Yeah, cognitive delay has to do with intelligence learning. So those ones, you know, we need special teachers and all that. Sometimes it's fine motor, the child is just okay. in the therapy. If it is a speech only delay okay. or the child is Speech is not yeah. clear or things like that. The child may just need a speech therapy. Yeah. But all the delay is therapy. more than okay. two or more, then there are more things to yeah. look at for. So those are the uh, 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 the things. But before, uh, so, and when it comes to those kind of serial delays and all that, there are, like I've mentioned, the fact that if there's any problem that happens at bars, you know, like yes. birth injury, the child is not crying at bars and things like that, then that kind of a child, uh may have developmental delay or a child who has jaundice oh, severe please. jaundice and bars you know that is why the newborn period is very crucial it is not enough for, for a baby to be born we must also make sure that the baby is born well you know sometimes we tell mothers please let's do cs mm -hmm. you'll say no i don't want cs i just want you know you can have a baby <laughs> but the baby could have disabilities whereas uh yeah, well, if we deliver the baby in a way that the baby will not have those uh uh, damage to the brain, then the baby will be alive and the baby will be fine as well. So it's very important. Right. And, and so any disease, when it's when a child is sick in a newborn period, for example, a child who has uh, meningitis, severe sepsis, it could also affect the brain. Mm -hmm. And so those kind of children may have developmental right. delay. Another major category of reason why some children mm -hmm. may have developmental delay or have developmental disabilities is if the children have what we call syndromes, they are born with some genetic or chromosomal abnormalities. It's so children okay. with yeah, children with some we call them uh, syndrome, genetic syndromes, like Down syndrome, for example. Yeah. Most of those children who are born yeah, with those there's some, yeah, something is wrong in the genes or the chromosomes. So those kind of children can have uh, development certainly and remember that the children's brain is still growing in the first three years of life you know the brain is about the only organ that uh is not fully formed at birth so the brain is not fully formed at birth okay. so the brain of a child is very vulnerable and it's still growing and so it's important okay. that we make sure that nothing happens to developing brain so a baby may have been born normally okay. But along the line, they, no, they, 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 something happened to the brain. Maybe the child became sick or things like that. Or the child is not getting appropriate nutrition for brain growth. Those kind of things will also affect development. You know, and sometimes some of some, some and the funny things that some of the things that happen to the brain, they may be irreversible, completely irreversible. In other words, there's nothing we can do about it. So we just have to help the children. So, so, but there are things that are reversible that we can do something about. Things like. <clears throat> Nutrition, for example, okay. yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say breastfeed your baby because the all the essential things that the brain needs for growth, they are in breast milk. And you know, it's like every time there's a baby touch here with the breast milk. But that is the, <laughs> <laughs> but that is the honest truth. Because
because uh, breast milk is very, uh, it contains everything that your, your child needs for growth. You know, so those are the, so, the, so those are some of the reasons why children can have uh, development. There are some of them we can do something about, like nutrition, like avoiding uh, necessary injury or illnesses that can affect the brain. But there are some of them that we cannot do something about. So uh, things like if a child is born with a syndrome, like Down syndrome, there's really nothing you can do something. There, there's really nothing you can do about it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. And mothers and fathers, I hope you have heard her. Please listen to your doctors. If you need to do a CS, it doesn't make you less than a woman. It's for the sake of your babies. They know better. All right. This is from Tara Tara. Whenever my baby is walking, she doesn't face up. Rather, she faces down. She is 11 months. Hope she will change. Dr. Bimi, 11 months old baby facing up when she's walking. I'm facing down. I, I, I'm not really sure. I facing understand. Down, I guess the child is just <laughs> actually number one, uh, Tara. For the fact that your baby is working at 11 months, I'm happy. That's normal development. And I guess okay. maybe your baby is just trying to be careful. Maybe she's just trying to be sure. You know, because when they start walking, they are still very. Uh, they are not yet balanced, so maybe she's just a very careful child who's making sure she's looking down to make sure she didn't put her, 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 her foot in the wrong place or trip over something, you know, because sometimes when they start working like that, they fall a lot, so maybe she's just being very proactive to make sure she looks where she's going, but that is fine, but personally, I'm not worried, a 11 months old work, a child who is working is fine, but you may, you can just watch it, but if it persists, then you may want to see uh, your doctor, and you know, so that's what I would say about that. Yeah, all right, thank you, Dr. Bimi. All right, this is from Sandra Marcus. My baby is 10 months plus, and she can't stand by herself, she's still standing with support. Okay, yeah, so this is Sandra. <laughs> you are the type of moms that I talk about that you worry a lot about things. <laughs> so, at 10 months, really, your baby should just be crawling. Yes, yeah. so most children start oh, to wow. cruise around 11 months. So what okay. your baby is doing is uh, uh, she's still standing with support. Yeah, that one, she's standing already. That's that's perfect, that's good. That's By 11 funny. months, she could stand and start moving around the table while holding the table. That's what we call cruising around. I don't expect her to start walking averagely by 12 months. So like I said, some children do some things earlier I mean, that's normal. And some children yeah, do some things yeah, a little bit later. Yeah. So, some children work at seven months, some children work at nine months. That does not mean if your child is not working at 10 months, you should worry. No, because the yes. average, the middle part, what we call the median age, is one year. But at the same time, some children will not okay. work until 18 months. And I, as a pediatrician, mm -hmm. I'm not still going to worry. So, we give gap. So, but if I'm 18 months, your child is not working, yes, I will worry. And then that's the time I expect you to come mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, come and ask, uh, meet me and, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah. So, so that's what we're saying. So, you just need to, but if you're not sure, you can always ask your pediatrician. You can always uh, uh, be sure. It's okay, but some that, that what you just said is still within uh, normal. That's for Sandra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Please don't forget to share, you know, get your friends to come online and watch and ask their questions. Dr. Bimi is still here taking our questions on developmental milestones and delay. Dr. Bimi, very quickly, um, something came to my mind now. Babies that are born prematurely, how do yeah. we measure their milestone attainment? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Okwe. Uh, babies that are born prematurely basically they came out a little bit early and now what we mm -hmm. pediatricians do is that sometimes uh prematurity so thank you for asking the question but prematurity is also <laughs> one reason why children could have developmental delay in other words because mm -hmm. babies that when they are born mm -hmm. premature their brain is still so fragile it's prone to what we call bleeding they can easily bleed in their brain ordinary carrying them touching them can mm -hmm. cause bleeding and so most of and then of course premature babies go through a lot of uh, difficult period and some of them not all of them some of them depending on how premature especially if they are below one kilo mm -hmm. they tend to have developmental delay mm -hmm. but that does not mean every develop every every uh, child with pre who was born preterm will have um 
we have a developmental delay. One thing we normally do, the, what normally happens is that most times mothers start looking at premature babies from the, uh, their chronological age. But what we pediatricians do is that we normally correct the age for preterm babies. So we correct their age by, uh, uh, we, we normally remove the, the bits that they came out too early. In other words, let's say, for example, a baby came out three months earlier, maybe was born at 28 weeks mm -hmm. instead of 40 weeks, so it was three months early. So what we normally do is to, if at the time that baby is one year, you will say the baby is one year. Let's say the baby mm -hmm. was born on the 7th of July, 2017. So you mm -hmm. will say that baby is one year today. But for the pediatrician, that baby is actually nine months. Because I'm going to take out that wow. three months, yes. <laughs> so that is the baby's. So the baby's chronological age is one year, but the baby's corrected mm -hmm. age, corrected mm -hmm. age wow. is nine months, which is the one year minus the extra three months that the baby came out too early. Mm -hmm. So when I'm exactly, so when I'm looking at that child from developmental perspective. I'm not going to say that child is one year. I'm going to say that child is nine months. So if that child is crawling at nine months, that child is seeing normal development. So the mother may have come to me and say, oh, this is my preterm baby is one year and it's not yet working and she is worried. But I will look at that and tell her, madam, your baby is actually nine months and she's crawling. Yes. And as long as she's crawling, then that is still within normal. So so that's how we do it. But some preterm babies are always have some of their own challenges and uh, that could, that could make them um you know that could, that, that could make them have delays. Uh, delays and all that so so basically uh that's how we do it yeah okay all right thank you dr bimmy um quick one um talking about developmental delays you know we have had situation where children don't talk early and they say oh his father didn't talk early his father's brother didn't talk early. Can these things be genetically transferred somehow? Is, is it possible, you know, for, yes. for, for that to happen? Yes, okay. thank you so much. So like, uh, okay, like I said earlier, uh, there are some uh, children that have developmental delay because of uh, uh, genetic syndromes. And it is not all the syndromes that... Uh, that cause big problems, you know. It will just be that that is, mm -hmm. uh, it will just be that area of development is the only part that could be slow for them. And there are some of those genetic syndromes that are, they can be transmitted from one family, you know, from one person in the family to another person. Generation. And so, yes, from generation to generation. So that, that's one of the questions we normally ask that, okay, is there any other person in the family? Mm -hmm. Would it be, you know, that, like, for example, let me just give you a simple one. Most children sometimes still work. They, they walk on their toes when they are starting to walk, you know. So you find that okay. in some family that, and when you ask the mom, they say, oh, the father also said I did it as well. So there are some things that okay. people in the family can do, you know. That's a, that's not something so abnormal, you know, but I'm just using that as an okay. example. But the same way you can also have it all that other genetic condition, all that genetic condition that cause developmental delays or developmental problems, mm -hmm. they can also be transmitted from one uh, uh from one uh, uh person in the family from parents to their children so it is very very possible and so and sometimes we offer genetic counseling yeah. to such families so there are some of them that the developmental yeah. problem could be so bad that you want to consider do i really want to have yeah. a child having the same problem you know but that is for the genetic yeah. counselors to deal with you know but some, most of them, they are not fine. But there are also some genetic syndromes that are not from uh, father to children. You know, they just, you know, they can children. just happen on their own. Yeah. Like Down syndrome, for example, it's not because the mother has Down syndrome. You know, that she, no, no, nothing like that. It's just happened. But usually it's common in older women okay. and things like that. Yeah. Or those who are what we call uh, some balanced translocation, you know, but they will not have Down syndrome. But if they give the part that is not complete to their own child, then that child may have some of those uh, down yeah. syndrome with the development of the leg, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bimi. All right, um, I have a question from your Bafo. Thanks for the education. Doctor, I'm a nurse and I love working with kids. Okay. Well, yeah, that's just a comment. Um, thank you, Bafo. Thank you, Yo. 
Oh. <laughs> Please ask your yeah, questions. Yeah. We'll see here. <laughs> All right. Yes, we can. We're here to take all your questions. We're here to educate you. You know, we're here to make you relax and calm when your children are not attaining what you think they should obtain. Doctor Bimi has told us not to be worried. All right, and please don't forget to share the video so that your friends can have the opportunity to watch and learn and uh, you know and ask their questions as well. Okay, Doctor Bimi, um, can you give us like um, basic milestones that um, should be attained at one, two? three, four, and five. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. But you know, like I told you, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a whole list. <laughs> so, but I'll just say, I'll just highlight. Paraphrase. Yes, I'll just highlight this. Especially the ones. parents want to hear. Yes, I'll just highlight this simple one. So let's start with gross motto. Uh, gross motto has to do with your child okay. walking, sitting, running, blah, 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 and all that. So, uh, most children should have neck control by three months. That's the average. Nice. So if at four months your child does not have neck control, you need to see your doctor. Most children should start sitting mm -hmm. by six months. So, but mm -hmm. they, that is what we call supported sitting, where you use pillows to support them. But they should be able to sit by themselves by eight months. Then most children will start crawling. Yeah, sitting by themselves. As far they will sit without you supporting pillow or anything. They can sit straight with the back straight then most babies will, will also walk uh will mm -hmm. crawl crawling then they will crawl by nine months then they should be walking by one year those are the average you know remember i tell you it's average so but if at the time your baby should be walking your baby mm -hmm. is not yet crawling then you should see a doctor if at the time your baby should be sit uh, crawling your baby is not yet sitting that's the time you just do. If at the time your baby should be sitting mm -hmm. with support that six months, your baby does not yet have neck control. So for mothers, I think that's the simplest way I can tell you when to uh, worry or when to see a doctor. So most babies, most children walk by one year. They should be running by 18 months, kicking ball. They should be able to crawl and sit on a chair by themselves at 18 months. By two years, they should be able to jump, jump with their two feet. That three years they should be able to pedal a tricycle, climb up the staircase without necessarily holding the uh thing, so and, and so on and so forth, like that. So, yes, but so usually we worry about the first yeah. two years, and uh, then uh, for fine motto, uh, most babies are born with their hand fisted like this. Uh, so by the time they're about three months, the hand should be open. In other words, most of the time, the hand should be open. If your baby's hand is still closed at three, mm -hmm. four months, okay. there may be a problem. And then by six, by four months, they should be able to bring their hands together in the midline. Uh, and then by six months, they should be able to reach. So when you when you carry when you carry a six month old baby, they usually will reach and grab something, either pull your chain or so they will reach and grab toys. So if your baby is not reaching out with their hands to take things as about that uh, 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 three months, then that means that there is a problem. Okay, and so basically that is uh, uh, about from then by nine months, they should be able to have what we call pincer grabs. They should be able to pick a small round object with just the Forefinger and the uh, and the and 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 the and the thumb, yeah. So they should have pencil grabs and all that. Then by one year, they group to grab a pen with what we call palm grabs. And then by eighteen months, they should be scribbling. Eighteen months should be scribbling. By two years, okay. um, they should be able to copy straight lines. Copy with a pencil straight lines. Mm -hmm. By three years, mm -hmm. they should be able to draw a circle. By four years, they should be able to draw a, a cross. Uh, or and the square as far as you have years, and by five years, you have to draw a triangle. So, those are the ways we measure a uh, fine muscle skill. Language wise, uh, most babies will cool, you know, they were making those sounds, you know, when they're about three to four months, and by the time they're about okay. seven to eight months, they should be babbling, ba -ba 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 -ba. they should be talking as if they are talking to you, but they are just ba -ba -ba -ma 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 -ba. you know, that is babbling. By one year, the child should have at least one to three words. So they have to say that mama, they will have what they will have their favorite word. They may call everybody mommy, they may call everybody daddy, but they should have at least one to three words that they use appropriately. In other words, when the child see mommy, you may call you may see mommy or see daddy and say call them mommy, but it's using it appropriately, or they may say other words, oh, hallelujah, or those kind of words. So they should have like one to three words. By the time they're about two years, they should start joining the words together. So they should start joining two words together. 
you know I, 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 so they will say mommy biscuits mommy go no that is two words <laughs> together that's what we expect from a three year old but it's time about three years old we expect them to join um to be to be talking sentences full sentences so you should be joining three words i want biscuits i want uh i want to juice or something like that yes yeah, something like that and then a four year old should be able to talk like an adult a four year old should talk in a way that an adult uh and a stranger can understand the four year old talking perfectly so if your four year old is not yet talking the way that's a a a a a an a, 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 an adult a complete stranger can understand and there must there must be a problem so that is about and by five years of course they are in school so that's about uh uh uh, uh, uh language in terms of personal show show by um most baby should be smiling at six weeks so they have one called social smile not the one that is smiling they sleep oh. <laughs> this is the one that they actually when they see the mom or they see somebody they actually look at you and they smile that's social smile and yes and then by the time they're about uh uh, uh seven months they have what we call stranger anxiety in other words when an adult somebody who is not their mother they want to carry them they would they will cry they don't want you to take them because they already know their mother they will rec by four, three to four months they recognize their mother's face they know all those kind of thing and then by um nine months they should finger feed so in nine months they should be able to take banana and eat it by themselves so they can pull off their cap and things like that those are all personal social skills uh by um uh, 18 months, they should be able to indicate wet diaper. In other words, if their nappy is wet, they will come to you and pull on it to give you a sign that you should you should take it out. By 18 months, they should be able to sit on a chair and turn the pages of a book. You know, those are all things they can do. And then by um, by two years, they should be dry during the day. They should, because by then they are talking, they should be able to tell you when they want to wee-wee and all that. They should be dry during the day. By three years, they should be dry they are nice. In other words, they should be fully toilet trained, you know, and by two years, they should be able to feed themselves with a spoon and they should be able to drink from a cup and all that. So by five, they should be, you know, dressing by themselves and putting on their own dresses and tying mm -hmm. their jewelries. And so those are some of the personal social skills. So like I say, that if you go online, the, the full details are online. So you, I may not be able to uh, say everything, but so that's basically, uh, yes, sure. yeah, so that's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Okay, quickly, this is from Justina Joshua, AK. My question is on speech delay or speech not clear in some children compared to them to their mates. Can this be hereditary? Okay, uh, thank you, Justina. I'm not sure whether I've answered your question in the, my previous because I seem like it seems like <laughs> I just finished talking about that right now. But basically, what what yes, you yes. number one, you are not very specific. You didn't talk about the age of the children, so I'm not sure whether you know because sometimes like you know just like Sandra asks me now, where I, I ten months old is not here working and she's worried. Uh, I, we need to see the child to know whether that speech is within normal limits for the child. Like we said, for us as pediatricians, we have a wide range. You know, most mothers, you always compare to the average, the middle line uh, age. But we have a wide limit of yeah. what is normal. So there's a point at which we now know this is a limiting age when we know that we really need to do okay. something. So, but to answer your question, some some speech, depending on the cause of that speech problem, if, if it is one of those genetic things, it could be hereditary, it could be, but we, we don't jump mm -hmm. to that first. Before we make those uh, uh, conclusions, we normally ask a lot of questions. So that's the way we, number one, what we do as developmental pediatricians, number one is, is there a problem? When we do our evaluation, about we want to know, is there a problem? In other words, is it development normal or abnormal? That's the first question we want to answer. Mm -hmm. Then it is after we've answered number one that we now go on to what is the cause of the problem? So you, mm -hmm. number one, so the first thing is, is that speech delay or not? We need to establish that first. So it is after we've established that speech delay, 
that we, because we know that that's the next question your mother are going to ask us that why why is my child speech delayed and all that then we now want to know what, whether there is a problem and those are the questions we will answer because we have done a full evaluation and that evaluation including okay. asking so many questions we asked questions for over like 60 minutes <laughs> and then we also examine the wow. child <laughs> and sometimes after examining the child we are still not sure some of them are very clear for example if i see your if i see a premature baby who is not yet working at two years yeah. and i know that the child was born at 28 mm -hmm. weeks was below one kilo and things like that i immediately know why that child has the de developmental That's delay because I, I i already know yeah. i already know maybe your child has jaundice and was severe jaundice you have to exchange the blood maybe two or three times I already know why the child has developmental delay but some children they are not so clear cut we are not sure the child Bad history was fine, pregnancy was fine, the child has been well, nothing has really happened. So for those kind of children, we need to dig deeper. And then sometimes we need to examine the child. Sometimes if we have to examine the child, sometimes we need to do more investigation before we can now say, yes, this is why this child has uh, uh, development. And sometimes even after all our ev 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 evaluation, even we do brain scan, we do brain MRI, we do genetic tests. Sometimes we see those know why some children have those uh, developmental delay. So it is not all the time that we can answer all your questions about why children have developmental delay. I hope that helps. Thank uh, you, Dr. Bimi. That. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. All right. This is from Akinla. I have a friend whose daughter is six years old, but she has not started talking. Is there any hospital you can refer her to, and what can she do to help the child to talk at six? Okay. At six, Akiola, uh, this is really okay. You're asking for a friend, so okay, I won't be able to. Uh, okay, so basically, a six year old should be talking. Uh, okay, what did I say about what, 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 at what age should a child be talking like an yes. What age did I Thank four. you. I just want to be sure that you are you're okay. following me. So, a four year old <laughs> should four. be talking like an adult. So, if a six year old is okay. not yet talking at all, because that's that's what I'm getting from this question, it's a problem. And I'm really worried mm -hmm. that that child has not been taken to the hospital. So, that child needs to see a developmental pediatrician. Uh, I understand that in, in Nigeria, for example, not all hospitals have developmental pediatrician, but you can see a pediatric neurologist. You can even see just a general pediatrician to start with. And when they <laughs> see the child, we will do what we call a developmental evaluation to know why is the child not talking. Okay. And when we know why the child is not talking, mm -hmm. then we can now um, uh, 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 we can now tell you what is the intervention to do, depending on the cause of this child's. Uh, uh, development uh, delay. Uh, sometimes, like I said, we may not be able to reverse what has happened, but okay. we can help the okay. child to maximize their life. You know, in other words, we can help the children to live good life. So, this child, for example, we need speech therapy. We need the time, depending on whether they are. Other, so some children are not talking because they are deaf. You know, maybe because the child can't hear. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention that vision and hearing are also part of developmental milestones, but because they must be present, mm -hmm. so we normally check that once off. It's not a milestone that changes. It is okay. it's either present or absent. Okay. So that the child can see or the child cannot see, or the child can talk or we'll cannot see. talk. And your, their child's ability okay. to see or not to see can affect the child in so many ways. So we always, in mm -hmm. most countries, okay. they would do what we call newborn screening. To make sure that the child can hear because if the child needs any intervention for their yeah. hearing like this day we have what we call cochlear implants and things like that it must be done before six months so that the child will still be able to develop normal speech yeah. you know so so yeah. those things must be checked in nigeria yeah. sometimes we don't check but i always tell mothers be very observant if when the dog bangs or there's a loud noise does your child turn does your child you know no cry yeah you on. must you yes. must know whether the child can hear and if you worry about your child not hearing you must see yeah. a doctor and because hearing delay, hearing impairments may be one of the reasons. If that's the reason for this child not talking, for example, the child needs to just go to a deaf school where they will learn sign languages and things like that. But if there are other developmental issues, you know, then that that needs to also be addressed as well. Okay, so uh, so uh, basically, uh, I can like, please tell them to take the child to a teaching hospital where they can see a pediatrician and then. Um, they will take it off from there depending on what is causing the child's delay mm -hmm. but the child will definitely need intervention because mm -hmm. six years old should be talking yeah that's great yeah thank you very much dr bimi all right this is from Oluwakemi. what can i do 
my second, my two and a half year old son is an early talker and now he stutters. What can I do? Oh. Well, uh, on what time you're last winter, there are many reasons why children can stutter, and uh, uh, it's, it's you would just need to say speech therapies. But this guy, I can see, give you some simple, simple um, uh, tips that you can use. Number one, yes. <laughs> try and you guys try and slow down your speech around the child, and number two, don't force the child to talk fast as well. So, if a child is stuttering, don't be in a hurry for the child to talk, just be patient. Because if you're patient, then the child will gradually, eventually know how to, you know, to slow down. So you can you can even tell him, all right, uh, uh, son, just calm down. Now tell me what you want to say. And be patient with the child. Don't try to say, why are you doing that? If you do that, you make the child to, to you stress the child the more, and then the child will stutter the more. And sometimes some stuttering in some families hereditary they, they just do that but i would just encourage you and sometimes it's a developmental thing after a while just like you say every child you just like to talk because the two year old just like to talk they may have that face but after a while it's, 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 but this can just see a speech therapist and if you also check on our facebook group on that regions you will see what our speech therapist already recommended you can try some of those simple strategies by yourself and if all those doesn't help then please you may need to see a speech therapist for um for more evaluation and intervention yeah. all right thank you dr baby this is from among the miriam a baby of 17 months can't crawl please what can i do yeah 17 oh. months old baby who's okay so okay yet. what do you say what do you say to that from our discussion <laughs> so far <laughs> and, uh, and, okay. <laughs> is this something said, to worry to about or not? So, no, 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 crawling yes, is, it is, it is something to worry about. Crawling, yes, 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 it is something to worry about. Okay, yes, thank you. So, yes, crawling, what, 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 yeah, what age should a, 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 a child be crawling? What's the average age? That's about nine months. Thank you. So, nine, nine months. months. So, and what is the next developmental stone after crawling? Walking. Yes. Yeah, and walking should be as what? One year. And so what I said before was that if a child is not yet doing a milestone, as at the time he should be doing another milestone, that is a, a one. One. That that means mm -hmm. you should worry. So in other words, baby should be crawling at nine months. So now this baby is not yet even crawling at one year when he should be walking. And now it's not yet even crawling at 17 months. So this child obviously have serious gross muscle delay i don't know whether there are other things the child is not doing because you didn't talk about speech or you didn't talk about that but basically this child needs to see a pediatrician uh preferably you can see a pediatric neurologist or developmental pediatrician at the closest teaching hospital to you and this child definitely will be needed the intervention of the physiotherapy so uh, among me try take this child to see the pediatrician and just to add to all those who are work, watching us please Mothers, I, I, I'm not happy that I'm seeing people asking me what to do when a sister is not yet talking, what to do when it's a woman. You know what? We have waited, to, and that's the essence of this process. Let's not wait too long. Yes. We, are, we are waiting too long. Once your child is not doing the next milestone, in other words, if at the, at the, when the child should be eating another milestone, the child has not done the one previous to that, Take, that's the time to go to see the yes. pediatrician. That's the time to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I would always recommend going to the teaching hospital to see a pediatric neurologist or developmental pediatrician because usually the management of such children is something sometimes some general pediatricians don't want. So eventually they will still refer you anyway mm -hmm. to see the, uh, the, 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 the specialist. So please don't wait so long before because sometimes the reason why I'm even sounding that is because sometimes early intervention helps. Sometimes if we pick up the children early and we start the physiotherapy or we start the speech therapy, they can early. they can come, they can they can recover. Mm -hmm. In other they can they can eventually get up. Yes, yeah, they can actually meet up and catch up with that development. And, you know, mm -hmm. not in all cases, depending on the cause. You know, I keep saying that for example, they try to severe brain damage, for example, <laughs> there's nothing we can do that will reverse everything. Okay, yeah. But there are some of them that there's really it's just a mild thing. If you start therapy early, the children will recover faster. So please always go to the hospital early and um, mm -hmm. and that, 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 that will really be helpful. Okay, I guess that's our last question. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we have any other yes, questions. I was going to say that. Yeah, but what I would just say is that if after today you see, okay, okay, I think Justina is asking another question. I think she's giving a, a 
Um, okay, Justina is yeah. back. Okay. Yeah. Um, concerning the speech, it's actually for my four-year-old child. We saw the speech therapist she recommended, and she said it's a result of weak muscles under her tongue. She's currently undergoing speech therapy, but a friend said her kids were like that too, and she got to she got to know it was hereditary. Yeah. Okay, so fine, uh, Justina, thank you for the update. So I'm happy that your child is already getting uh, uh, speech therapy, which is quite therapy. good. Yeah, so the most important thing is that the child is getting intervention. So whether it's hereditary or not is irrelevant. In other words, I don't know whether you are asking whether if it's something hereditary, um, because those who happen okay. who has the same condition eventually got over it without any intervention, whether it is any point okay. for you to do any intervention or not, we will always intervene. Even if we know that, see, it is better to do speech therapy, intervene, and let the child get better, and let us say, oh, maybe we should just have let the child, maybe the child will improve on his own, than to, than to wait and not do intervention and now regret that, oh, maybe if we have started intervention early, the child would have done much better. I hope, I hope you get my yeah, analogy. Yeah. In other words, you lose yeah. nothing intervening when yes. a child has developmental delay. In fact, that's what we pediatricians recommend. Most times, for you to see a developmental projection, there's a waiting list, there's a long list of children for assessment. But while you are waiting, we always recommend start the intervention. Mm -hmm. Your child is not yet working, go and start physiotherapy. Your child is not talking, start speech therapy. It doesn't matter what the cause of the speech delay or what the cause of the delay in working is. The most important thing is that start the intervention mm -hmm. because early intervention works. It may take you time for the pediatrician to come, like you know, like I said, or whether. To, to know what is causing the problem, okay. it is not always straightforward. In some cases, it's very straightforward. But sometimes, in some cases, it's not straightforward. We still need to do brain scan. We need to do genetic tests. Sometimes, we don't even have those tests available in some places. And sometimes, even after doing all the tests, you may never know what is causing it in okay. some cases. So the most important thing is not even what is causing it. The most important thing is that the child should get intervention that the child should be getting. And so okay. that's basically what I, I, will, I, will, I will recommend. And I think Omo Umi is also bad. And um, okay, Omo yes, I just said a question for like that. 17 months. Mm -hmm. Okay, 17 months baby can't stand on his own unless with the help of something. She initially said the child was crawling. crawling. But yeah, but I'm still, yes, I'm, 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 I'm still worried about. because your baby should be walking mm. as one year. And if at one at seventeen, you remember even my cutoff for working five months. Five months. Exactly. Even my cutoff for working is eighteen months. So at eighteen months, uh, uh, at eighteen months, I expect that the child should now. If at eighteen months the child is not working, I'll be worried. Now at seventeen months already, the child is not yet even. It's only cruising. I'm still worried about your child. I would Standing rather you see. Support. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would rather uh I would rather you just see a pediatrician of me. I think you just see a pediatrician and most likely maybe your child may just need a little bit of physiotherapy and that child will be fine. Okay. Among me, just see a doctor. I'm worried about your child and I, I usually I don't worry too much, but what you've told me so far, I'm worried and I think you should see a pediatrician immediately. Okay, I think we'll take our final question from Doctor Okay and then we can go. Because then, our program ends at 11. Yeah. 11, yes. Okay, we're fast spent. All right, I happen to hear some people speaking about delayed speech on air. Suggest, and suggested that incubators, nursing a jaundice baby in it could lead to brain injury, which may result in delayed speech. I wow. want you to clarify and make it clear that nursing a baby in an incubator does not have wow. such an effect. Thank you. Wow. Dr. Obi, please clear the air on that. So that <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Oke. I mean, I'm really, <laughs> you see, unfortunately, uh, anyway, <laughs> let me just start by saying that's why we have access to pediatricians. Uh, I, I'm not surprised because sometimes okay. some people have access to mass media and they go and say nonsense. And and remember, you know, okay. everybody, not every, everybody else saying because they, they know somebody or that is working in the radio, they go to the radio, they go to the TV and they will okay. just go and say anything they like. Please, when it comes to information you hear, from whether it's from the radio, whether it's from the TV, whether it's on Facebook, always weigh yes. your information. Who is giving this information? Okay. Is this person qualified? And I always tell mothers, for example, uh, 
if a mechanic told me, Dr. Bemi, your dress is not looking fine, you should do it this way, uh, this is the way the dress should have been sewn, I'm not going to listen to him because he's not a, a, a fashion okay. designer or a seller. He's not qualified to give me that information. If it's something wrong with my car, yes, I will listen to him because he's the mechanic. So if it's anything wrong with my car, I will listen to a mechanic. If something is wrong with my dress, I will listen to a fashion designer and things like that. The same thing, when something is wrong, when, when it comes to out of children, we should listen to the professional. And, and that's why that's one of the reasons, honestly, why I started asking the direction because there's lots of misinformation online. So Dr. Oge is saying again, for those who didn't hear or read the question, that putting a baby in the incubator is what is causing brain injury no excuse me no the brain injury is caused by the jaundice okay it is not the incubator that is causing the brain injury and jaundice is one of the reason why we have a lot of babies it's one of the preventable causes of developmental delay and the reason why babies end up having developmental delay with jaundice is because mothers don't come to the hospital on time what do they do baby have jaundice they'll go and give papa water they will go and put on that the sun and then they they will say okay it will clear or oh, it's just my jaundice excuse me jaundice is one of the reasons babies are. and most of because mothers want to do naming ceremony first before they bring babies to the hospital and then they bring the baby to us the jaundice level sv is 35 is 38 we are changing plot two three times sometimes and unfortunately sometimes we have the baby's brain is gone and all the baby's brain is gone is gone that's unfortunately one of the things about brain brain is also one of the organs that owns its damage that is it is irreversible that part of the brain is gone forever where it's nothing for now that we can do about it so it is not the putting the baby in the incubator i don't know whether there are those of us that also had that same broadcast that dr Oge is referring to Please, it is not putting the babies in the incubator. It is not nursing a jaundice baby in the incubator that is causing brain damage. And that is misinformation. It is the jaundice, it, and it's jaundice that if the jaundice is severe, that it that will cause that kind of uh, uh, brain damage. So please, please, damage. basically, when you hear uh, uh, questions, uh, please kindly, I mean, when you hear information, always weigh who is giving the information and don't be misinformed. But we can always assure you that on active pediatricians, we always give information by professionals and our professionals are specialists in the field. So when you hear from us, you can also go and clarify it. You can always search, and, but you, you can always be sure we're giving you the right information. Among me is asking again that I should attempt a question. I've answered your question among me. Take your baby to see a pediatrician. Your baby has developmental delay. That's what we're going to say. We don't know why, but your baby should be walking at 18, at 17 months. And if your baby is still not yet walking at 17 months and it's just cruising around the table, you need to take your baby to the hospital. Yeah. So that's it. All right. So our time is fast, friends. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. We have to go now. We're yeah. so sorry if we've not been able to take your question. So I think, no, tell us how we can ask questions. Yeah, so it's just also hard to say that this our program today has been brought to you courtesy of Active Pediatrician Foundation. Uh, Active Pediatrician Foundation, we we okay. we we our vision is to improve child health uh, globally, and we do this through our our various platform on Active Pediatrician Facebook group and our Active Pediatrician Foundation page, mm -hmm. and we also do community medical outreaches. So, of course, all these things cost That's a lot of true. fun, and so we, we appreciate if you can support us. There are many ways you can support us, the pediatricians. You can see our accounts number on the screen. You can also advertise your program on our Ask Pediatrician Live uh, broadcast, and we'll be able to uh, keep this program running. And in any way you want to support us, you can just use the account details or you can just email us. And also, apart from that, um, you we can also uh, uh, you can also uh, drop your questions. We run a Facebook group where you can drop your questions uh, twenty four seven uh, uh, Mondays to Saturday, Monday to Saturday. So go to Ask Pediatrician Facebook group. Just put www.facebook.com slash groups slash ask the paid and you will land in ask pediatrician once you join the group you can drop your questions and when you drop your questions we have 
our, our uh, moderators, our our professionals who will uh, who will answer your questions. And if you don't want to ask, if you don't want people to know who is asking the questions, mm -hmm. then if you want to send us an anonymous mm -hmm. questions. You can go to um, you can email us and to email, email us. Yes, yeah, send us an email as ask ask a s k at ask the pediatricians. The pediatrician sends with an X. So ask the pediatrician one word dot com and we will, we will answer your question we will report we will reply you directly in your email and at the same time we will also post it on the group for people to learn we also have social learning units on our ask the pediatrician facebook uh uh uh, 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 uh on our ask facebook group and we also have a website where you can also um uh you can reach topical child health yeah, issues on our sure. website yeah. and you can get information if you don't want to come to facebook because we know that not everybody comes to facebook we have been doing this for three years now uh july is actually our active pediatricians uh uh third anniversary um so we've we've come a long way and we're very happy to continue so thank you so much for uh joining us uh this morning and we hope to to see you again next week and but in the meantime please if you still have questions please don't drop your question as comments once we are off once we go off yeah. uh, live broadcast but please go to the group as your facebook group and just drop your questions there and we'll be very happy to to answer your questions thank you so much okay, yeah. so thank you for being me yes if you have missed the video you can still watch the video you know yeah on our facebook page and groups all right so yeah. thank you all for for your time with us i hope you have learned something and please yeah. your child's health is very important take yeah. them to the hospital when you need to do that all right enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye see you bye. next week bye bye Thank you.